This week, learn how to make KMZ files of points, like this map, of the Mesonet station locations. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I want to show you how to make a KMZ file, which is just a zipped version of a KML, or Keyhole Markup Language file, that can be read into many GIS tools, including the free Google Earth Pro. And over the next few weeks, we'll play with this some and show you how to make some interactive visualizations in Google Earth Pro using Python to write data out. So first, I'm going to import pandas as pd and we're going to get some data to play with. In this case, it's going to be from the Oklahoma Mesonet. Mesonet.org slash data slash public slash Mesonet slash current slash current dot CSV dot text. Uh, got a double extension somehow there on this one. And I'm going to specify that the delimiter is a comma. So if we look at the head of this data file, it's got the station ID, the station name, the uh, state, lat, lawn, year, month, day, hour, minute, and so on. Now this week we're not going to worry about any of the meteorological data, but we're just going to look at locations and how can we create points on our map. So we're going to use a package called simple KML to create our KML file. So we're going to import simple KML. If you don't have simple KML, it can be installed from pip or from the Conda Forge channel on Conda. Now the first thing we need to do to create a KML file is, well, we need to create an instance of the KML object. So KML equals simple KML dot KML. Notice the capital K. And now let's start out by making one point. So anytime that you're using a new package or something that's new to you, you don't want to try to tackle the whole problem at once. We're going to approach this in a piecewise fashion. So from reading the documentation, I find that there is a method called new point. As you can see, there's lots of new things in here, new multi-geometry, photo overlay. There's lots of interesting things that we can explore. But new point is what we want. And there's lots of documentation along with it as well. But to start out with, we're going to be pretty simple. Uh, we're going to give our point a name. I'm going to call it test. And we're going to give our point some coordinates. Uh, and altitude is optional, uh, latitude and longitude are required. Longitude first. So I'm just going to pick this Antlers, Oklahoma station up here. Negative 95.67 and 34.25. All right, so we get something like a type error. So what's going on here? Well, we go down to the bottom of our error message and we see to object of type float has no lin. So what's the problem? Well, as it turns out, if we look more closely at the documentation, chords is a list of points. So we put our point in a tuple, and we put that in a list, and now everything works. This is one of those things that can drive you crazy when you're doing a new library, and it's just something you have to read the documentation and get used to thinking about how it might be written. For example, it's plural. So maybe this is something that we could expect to have a sequence in. All right, and then let's save our file out. So kml.save, and we can either save it as a KML or as a KMZ, which is the zipped version, as I mentioned. Let's do that. I call it testfile.kmz. All right, now I'll go open that up in Google Earth. And here we are. We zoom in to the test data point. 
And we only have two decimals of precision, so we don't expect it to be just absolutely dead on the mesonet site. But it's in the general area. And we can zoom back out in Google Earth. We can hit R to have a straight down view if we want. And it was the antler site. Notice it has the test name that we gave it. And if I click on it, right now nothing comes up. So we want to maybe add a legend. And maybe we want to change, instead of testfile.kmz, we could give this kmz file a dataset name. So I'm going to delete that. And let's go back to Python. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do when I create my KML objects, I'm going to give it a name, mesonet site locations. And then let's go ahead and see if we can loop over all of the rows here and create a data point or a point for each object. Now we want each thing to have a new name, so that's why I'm going to loop in this case. Oftentimes looping isn't the right answer, but in this case I think it's the easiest way to accomplish what we want, and we don't have hundreds of thousands or millions of records here. I'm going to use iter rows, which returns the index and then the row object to me. We'll indent. The name is going to be row, and let's go with station ID. The coordinates are going to be row lawn and row lat. Okay, so we can run that cell, save our test file, and back to Google Earth. Okay, so now we see that we've got Mesonet site locations as the name of the data set over here, and we've got a push pin for every location. We can hit R to get a straight down view, but if we click on a pin right now, there's still nothing there. So we might want to add a description. Uh, it could be the name of the station, or we could put some data in there. And I want to change the icon because these yellow push pins don't really mean anything uh, to me. So I'm going to use a different icon there. So let's go back to Python. When I create my new points, I'm going to add a description. Or I'm going to set it to be the name of the station for now. We'll deal with some data later on. And then I'm going to, on the point in the style objects, in the icon style, the link to the icon, I'm going to set it to be this PNG file that I found. Noun Anemometer 1133. This is from the Noun Project, which is a great place to get free icons. And I downloaded the 100 by 100 pixel version. So let's run these cells again. Oh, and we've got a typo here. We're missing a comma. There we go. And now we look at that file in Google Earth. All right, so we've got our stations, and when we click, we get a description that's got the station name, and I now get directions to and from and so on. But my icons aren't right. And this is one of the tricky things that I found while playing with Simple KML. It lets you set properties that aren't really there. You can set any property. There's no checking on that. So as it turns out, if we go back to Python, this is really point.style.iconstyle.icon.href. And we get a warning that we're including files of a duplicate name. That's fine. We can ignore that. But it just goes to show you that if you're not getting the expected behavior and no error message, it may be that you're trying to set a property that doesn't exist and simple KML just isn't complaining about it. So now let's open this file. All right, and finally, here we are. We have our little weather station icon. We can click and get a description that is the full name of the station. And it's a layer that I can turn off and on with all my other layers here in Google Earth. So I could turn off roads, for example, or turn them back on. So this is just the start of our playing with Simple KML and how to use the free tool Google Earth Pro and the Simple KML library 
to make files that you can ingest into it. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.